So um, as we know, hypothalamic hematomas are benign tumor-like malformations that cause seizures, uh, developmental deficits, behavioral problems, and endocrine issues. And uh, what this portion of the talk is going to kind of focus on is the seizures and the evaluations of these seizures. So, uh, you know, we talk about seizures all the time, but, you know, we, uh, we'll, we'll kind of gloss around a lot of times as professionals about what seizures really are, you know. So, you know, in plain terms, you know, a seizure is a sudden change of awareness, movements, actions, or behavior. And, and it tends to be caused by, and they're caused by sudden bursts of electrical activity in the brain, uh, similar to uh, a computer malfunction. Uh, what happens, what actually happens in the brain is a little bit more involved with that. Um, so, you know, uh, what I kind of tell my patients is that, um, if you can imagine, uh, what really kind of happens in epilepsy and kind of the root of epilepsy is that there's just one, and particularly in uh, hypothalamic hematomas, is that uh, there's a part of the brain that tends to be a little bit irritable, okay? And uh, um, the reason why uh, these parts of the brain are irritable are uh, a lot of times due to these hyperexcitable pathways that, that we talk about. You know. But you know, when we see these on, uh, what we see this uh, on scalp EEG, you know, kind of what it look, kind of looks like are what we call epileptic spikes. You know. And um, kind of what these are, these are, they're just kind of little sparks of electricity that just kind of shoot off every once in a while. You know, very randomly, they shoot off randomly, and they shoot here and there. You know, tend to be in, in the areas that we're concerned about. Uh, and that's kind of what happens in between the seizures. Okay, what actually happens kind of in, uh, during the seizures is that at some point those sparks of electricity they kind of catch fire. You know. And instead of shooting off randomly every once in a while, they start shooting off re repetitively, and they synchronize and involve larger areas of brain. And uh, at some point, uh, these areas that catch, kind of catch fire, they get large enough, and they involve relevant areas that kind of, at that point, the kind of manifest as physical seizures that we see. You know? So you know, in, in, in fairly uh, plain terms, that's kind of what happens. That's kind of what we see on the scalp EEG. So we're actually kind of fortunate in that uh, we can actually see uh, all this electrical activity by using scalp EEG and non-invasively. And uh, what the scalp EEG, uh, what scalp EEG involves is placing all these electrodes on the scalp so we can actually detect all, these elect all this electrical activity uh, underneath the scalp and in the skull and what's going on in the cortex. Okay. So, um, so a lot of times what we end up having to do is uh, actually admitting uh, patients with seizures in order to kind of capture uh, these seizures and see exactly what they look like. And uh, what it involves is admitting them to a hospital room where there's a video camera and hooked, uh, hooked up to these EEGs for, for, uh, uh, for continuous amounts of time. So that way we can see what the video, uh, what the seizures look like physically and we can kind of correlate to what it looks like on the EEG. And really what the end point and what we hope happens is that we capture uh, a seizure pattern that corresponds to a certain area of the brain. You know? And that's what we ha hope happens uh, in very typical epilepsy surgical cases. You know? And hopefully that area would correspond to some sort of lesion that we can identify that we can surgically remove, with the end result being that uh, we, can take it, uh, we can take the patient to surgery and remove this part and this bad part of the brain and potentially cure the seizures. Okay, so uh, more specifically with hypothalamic hematomas, um, uh, there, are very, uh, there are various types of seizures that we do see, and, and you know, it's pretty much anything and everything under the sun. Uh, but more commonly, what we tend to see are the gelastic seizures, of course. And uh, this slide is, uh, and, uh, I should mention a lot of this information that I'm, taking, uh, that I'm presenting in this, uh, um, uh, in this presentation is actually taken from the very wonderful work that Dr. Carradine's done over the Barrow. Uh, but uh, most commonly what we see in, uh, in hypothalamic hematomas are gelastic seizures, and that's the most common thing that we see. And it accounts for about 77% of the seizures that, uh, of the cases that we see. Uh, but the next co most common type would be complex partial seizures and then generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Uh, but we do also tend to see other types of seizures, such as simple partial seizures, secondarily generalized seizures, atonic and tonic seizures, uh, myoclonic seizures, drop attacks, and uh, very rarely infantile spasms. Uh, 
Um, so uh, 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 gelastic seizures themselves are, as Dr. Wolfen kind of mentioned, is uh, uh, seizures characterized by sudden and inappropriate laughter. It tends to be a mirthless or emotionless laughter, and they tend to be occur at very uh, inappropriate times, and it may simply manifest as sim uh, simply uh, smiling or grinning. So um, this would be an example of a gelastic seizure, and this is uh, these videos I'm showing are actually in the public domain. They're actually seen on the uh, actually found on the internet, so there's no patient confidentiality issues at hand. But uh, so this is a patient with a gelastic seizure occurring out of sleep. And, you know, of course, it's occurring at a very inappropriate time, you know, in an inappropriate place. Yeah. And that's actually very typical of kind of what we see with these gelastic seizures. Okay, so um, it's kind of interesting, and, uh, and it's been mentioned before, that gelastic seizures, it's, uh, with gelastic seizures, it's actually very not, un it's not unusual for the EGs to, uh, d to show no evidence of a seizure at all. And uh, this may occur up to 75% of the time. So that's quite a lot, and that's a very high percentage. You know. uh, but when we, do tend to see, when we do see the seizures, they either tend to be generalized, meaning they, uh, and they appear uh, on the whole surface of the brain at once, uh, or uh, when they do appear focal, they, either, they tend to be in this general frontotemporal region over here. And uh, a small percentage of the time, they tend to be multifocal, meaning multiple areas at the same time. Okay. So, you know, so the history with this is actually kind of interesting. You know, uh, and we've known for the longest time that there's been there's an association be, there's been a, an association between these hypothalamic hematomas and multiple seizure types. You know, uh, but uh, it, it was all, it was only until 20 years ago that we actually, uh, for the first time, kind of made a direct connection. And uh, what, then, uh, what, that, uh, what that whole process involved was actually implanting uh, implantable electrode directly into the hip hypothalamic hematoma. And I, I believe the first group that did this was in 1995, and this was in Grenoble, France. Yeah. So that actually, they were the first ones to kind of uh, demonstrate this. And shortly after that, uh, the group at uh, Montreal Neurological Institute kind of repeated the same thing in a couple of patients and saw the same thing. You know, and it's actually kind of interesting because uh, with these depth electrodes, you can actually, um, uh, with these implantable electrodes, you can actually st um, uh, um, stimulate with a little bit of electricity uh, into the areas that's involved and simulate a seizure. And uh, what they kind of noticed afterward uh, um, during this whole process is if you stimulate the hypothalamic hematoma uh, with this electrical activity and simulate a seizure, you actually provoke a gelastic seizure. So, you know, I mean, I think it's pretty clear uh, um, uh, from an academic standpoint that, uh, and that these gelastic seizures are generated from these hypothalamic hematomas. Uh, but, um, but again, yeah, the history of this is actually kind of interesting. Okay. Um, so on the other hand, complex partial seizures uh, is a seizure type where the patient is awake but not alert, or not fully alert. Um, uh, they tend not to be able to respond or answer questions, or uh, at the very least, they tend to be very altered when, you, uh, when they're examined. Uh, they may have repetitive behaviors such as picking at clothing or smacking lips. Uh, and this would be a, uh, an example of one of these types of seizures. Okay. And it, it, if you can see on this video, uh, the patient appears awake, and I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm taking a So the, the mother already knows that something's going on. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming because she's seen these before. It's OK, baby. OK, do you need a wee-wee? Now, you, know, you can tell he's kind of responsive, but he's kind of slow to respond. And he doesn't quite seem like he's all there. And he kind of has this kind of a blank look on his face. Okay. 
And it looks like the seizure is probably over at this point. So these, t these seizures do tend to be a little bit subtle. And, you know, and the, to a lot of lay people, they, they would miss this because it's not the type of seizure that you typically think about. Uh, but and that's actually very, uh, very typical for this type of seizure. But in any event, um, with complex partial seizures in association with hypothalamic hematomas, they, uh, they, they do tend to be more associated with EG changes on, uh, than the gelastic seizures. Um, and when we do see them, they do tend to be, again, in the frontal region or in the temporal region. Uh, but they also may be silent on scalp EEG as well, um, presumably because these are originating in the hypothalamic hematoma in these cases. So, um, uh, uh, but it's generally felt that the behavioral motor features of these complex partial seizures arise from the spread of the seizures from the frontal and temporal lobes themselves and not, not actually generated from the hypothalamic hematoma. So an another kind of uh, interesting that thing that kind of uh, has come out of the uh, research from multiple sources uh, in regards to hypothalamic hematomas and, and, um, and EG, uh, seizure EEG patterns is that um, uh, in uh, patients with these HHs that are, tend to be connected on one side or the other, that tends to be the propagation pattern that we see uh, on, the, on the scalp EEG. Uh, meaning that, uh, for instance, if the uh, hypothalamic hematoma is more connected on the right side than the left side, then the seizure patterns, if we do see them, they tend to be in the right frontal lobe or the temporal lobe. You know? So that's actually kind of an interesting thing, and it kind of uh, speaks to the kind of complex uh, connection pathways that we do see. But, uh, but, uh, but um, uh, it's actually kind of interesting for us because uh, as a group doing these uh, uh, stereotactic laser abrasions, that actually kind of gives us a clue on kind of where the areas we do need to kind of focus on during, the, uh, during these procedures. Okay. Um, so uh, in any regard, uh, the last thing I kind of wanted to touch up on was uh, that um, there have been some more quantitative uh, uh, meth uh, attempts to kind of uh, localize where all this electrical activity is kind of going on during uh, on the EG and associated with hypothalamic hematomas. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of work on this, um, but um, there was one interesting paper way back in 2002 uh, where they did what we call electrical dipole source analysis in uh, in relation to hypothalamic hematomas. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with it, what these source analysis uh, what this uh, source analysis is. Uh, it's a computerized way of trying to triangulate where all this electrical activity is kind of going on using mathematical algorithms. And it's a lot of what, uh, a lot of what I do here uh, at, at Texas Children's Hospital. But um, um, uh, kind of the advantage of this is that uh, it kind of, instead of kind of giving us a broad area of where this electrical activity is coming from, uh, which is what scalp EG kind of tells us. It kind of it kind of takes all that and it kind of calculates certain areas of the brain where where this may be uh, located from, and it kind of gives us and it gives it to us in a three D space, so we get kind of have a better idea of what uh, what's generating these. So uh, it was actually kind of interesting then when they kind of looked at this uh, that um, when they looked at the spikes in between the seizures, and not surprisingly. Um, the, the spikes on the scalp EG looked like they were coming from either the frontal or the temporal lobe, as, uh, as I kind of uh, mentioned before. Um, when they kind of did the, and the analysis on these, they actually kind of noticed that at the very beginning of these little spikes were little subtler activities that, that you could barely see. And uh, when they actually did the triangulation with this method here, they actually kind of put these little uh, electrical sources in the vicinity of the hypothalamic, uh, of the hypothalamic hematoma there. And uh, in this 3D space, uh, it's kind of these, uh, this circular area here. And uh, what they kind of notice is that uh, before you see these little, uh, um, the activity occurring in the temporal lobes over here, you see that little activity that looks like it's coming with the hypothalamic hematoma. So what that kind of, uh, what that kind of suggests to us is that um, uh, these, uh, these spikes that we're seeing on the scalp and the temporal and the frontal lobes are actually generated in the hypothalamic hematoma. So, and then again, that's not terribly surprising to us, but it's actually interesting that someone was actually able to kind of uh, um, uh, quantitate that a little bit. 
Okay. Um, so, uh, in summary, um, hypothalamic hematomas are frequently associated with different seizure types, most frequently gelastic seizures and complex partial seizures. Uh, video EEG monitoring is often used to evaluate both the physical seizures and the associated electrical brain activity. Uh, both gelastic seizures and complex partial seizures in HH patients may show normal EGs during the seizures, uh, and this is likely due to the deep nature of the hypothalamic hematoma. And when seen, uh, seizure patterns on EEG do tend to show up on the side where the HH is more connected.